So let us look at the examination findings of these patients apart from the perspective of a hepatomegaly. These patients would be having a presentation of a large A wave and there would be a blunted Y descent. So let me just explain that to you. Trichuspid stenosis does not occur alone. In fact, most of the cases of trichuspid stenosis will occur coexistent with mitral stenosis. I'm going to draw a shunt diagram here before you where I'm going to show both simultaneous presence of MS and TS and then see how the disease will evolve. The symptoms of mitral stenosis will usually be more prominent than that of trichuspid stenosis. How that happens, I'll just explain to you. Uh, in this crude diagram, what I've done is that I have narrowed the orifices of both the valves. Now what you can see is that the amount of blood that can come from the right atria into the right ventricle and the amount of blood that can come from the left atria into the left ventricle is reduced. So mitral stenosis will definitely contribute to left atrial congestion and therefore most of the patients would be having a structural damage to the left atria which can trigger even an atrial fibrillation. The dilated left atria will then transmit the pressure to the pulmonary veins and the pressure of the pulmonary veins will then be transmitted to the lungs. So most patients would be having dyspnea on exertion. Why? Because there is a pulmonary edema. Long-standing pulmonary edema will contribute to pulmonary artery hypertension and this is going to contribute to a development of right ventricular hypertrophy. You are aware from your medical school and even I have taught you the fact that in mitral stenosis the disease is located on the left hand side but the hypertrophy is occurring on the right ventricle. You can see that this trichuspid stenosis is like a blessing in disguise in a sense that it will prevent the transmission of these pressure changes in a backward direction because the orifice is relatively narrow so the gradient between the RA and RV will also change and therefore the back pressure changes that is the transmission of the mitral stenosis disease process to the right side that is made Mainly, transmission of the pressure changes to superior vena cava, inferior vena cava will be lesser because trichuspid stenosis is acting like a barrier. Now, when you treat mitral stenosis of the severe variety with percutaneous mitral balloon valvotomy, once PMBV has been treated in the patient, then the features of pulmonary congestion will disappear. Now the symptoms of trichuspid stenosis will manifest and what will be the manifestations would be that the amount of blood going from the RA to RV will also be lesser. So therefore there would be a lot of congestion in the right atria. This congestion in the right atria will then translate into congestion in the superior vena cava as well as congestion in the inferior vena cava of the patient and as the pressure is transmitted downwards towards the liver so these patients will start developing a hepatomegaly initially though in the later run these patients will be having a development of cardiac cirrhosis i'll repeat my findings once again suppose a patient is having ms and ts together then mostly the symptoms of ms will be predominating Initially, when patients present to us with combination of the two lesions, most patients would be having dyspnea on exertion, orthopnea, which are so prominent features that you will mainly pay attention to pulmonary edema component and work up the patient and diagnose that he is having mitral stenosis and echocardiography will pick it up and trichuspid stenosis may or may not be picked up on that particular point of time because one TS may not be that severe initially or for that matter of fact because the radiologist was more focused towards the symptoms of the patient so he evaluated the left side very thoroughly right side was usually neglected so most of the time in clinical practice what happens is that ms is treated aggressively by percutaneous mitral balloon valvotomy since it is of the severe variety now we should definitely be having resolution of symptoms of the patient and yes pulmonary congestion will resolve but now features of right-sided heart failure will develop. So that is what he is explaining in the textbook that in a person of severe mitral stenosis who has been treated with a balloon dilatation, there are features of right ventricular failure. Why that right-sided failure features are developing is primarily because of the fact that there is a congestion in the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava transmitted to the liver. So these patients will be having development of hepatomegaly. There would be a pedial edema and ascites in a patient. And in the long run, because the person can also develop cirrhosis. 
so features like caput moduse can also be mentioned in the question that might make you think for a while this could be a case related to portal hypertension but in portal hypertension then you don't read about features like uh, dyspnea and exertion and in portal hypertension you don't have a hepatomegaly i mean one of the basic causes of portal hypertension is cirrhosis of the liver you don't have a hepatomegaly in the patient so by reading the question you would definitely be able to identify that this person with ascites pedial edema caput moduse is having a enlarged liver problem is originating from the heart of the patient so let us look at the examination findings of these patients apart from the perspective of a hepatomegaly these patients would be having a presentation of a large a wave and there would be a blunted y descent so let me just explain that to you the reason for a large a wave in a patient can be appreciated from the fact that due to tricuspid stenosis the right atria of the patient will have to generate more force to push blood in a forward direction in this diagram i'm showing atrial systole before you this is the jugular venous column hypothetically so if a person is having a ts tricuspid stenosis here then the higher pressure in the right atria would definitely translate into the column going much higher than normal and that is why i said these patients would be having is a presentation of large waves the second feature i've said is a blunted y descent so let us also see that is why y descent is related to relaxation of the heart when there is a rapid ventricular filling so first i have shown a normal diagram with respect to ventricular filling and then what i am saying is that if this opening is relatively narrow then the filling that will occur in the ventricle will be relatively slower so i said two findings in these patients large a wave and blunted y descent not steep y descent mark my words blunted y descent the opposite of steep is a feature that is seen in patients of tricuspid stenosis another feature which will be very characteristic of this patient and would be written would be pre systolic pulsations of the liver mark my words there i did not say systolic pulsations of the liver systolic pulsations of the liver are a feature of tricuspid regurgitation which i'll discuss with you subsequently because tricuspid regurgitation operates during systole and tricuspid stenosis is when the heart is relatively relaxing so pre systolic pulsations of the liver is a feature or he might just write the word pulsatile liver so remember my technical words pulsatile liver is a feature of both ts and tr but in tricuspid stenosis the pulsation will be pre systolic and in tricuspid regurgitation they will always be systolic i repeat my statement again tricuspid regurgitation has a pulsatile liver it would be a systolic pulsation of the liver in tricuspid stenosis it would be a pre systolic pulsations that would be occurring in the patient then we'll talk about the murmur that can be seen in these patients for the murmur part we can again have a look at the diagrammatic representation if i show in the same diagram it will become a little clumsy so you can see that this opening is relatively narrowed here and uh, therefore there would be turbulence when the blood will enter from the Uh, right atria to the right ventricle so this person will also be having a mdm that is a mid diastolic murmur just like that of mitral stenosis this mid diastolic murmur that would however be seen in the patient uh, would be uh, becoming louder on inspiration because you are aware of the fact that all events which are present on the right side of the heart they become louder with inspiration so we can differentiate it from a murmur of mitral stenosis because the murmur tends to become relatively louder with the process of inspiration and this would be mainly heard in the left lower sternal border and uh, mainly radiating or would be located at the tricuspid area so the location of the murmur will also give you a hint and the variation of the respiration will also be giving you a hint because uh, this murmur is best appreciated when you put your stethoscope the close to zephoid process now for the work up of these patients you need to do a ecg and you simultaneously need to do a echocardiography of the patient in the ecg of the patient i'll uh, just go back in my slide and show you that these patients would be having is a presentation of large p waves in the ecg of the patient you will definitely be able to notice the fact that the vertical height of the p wave will definitely be more than normal uh the p wave of this patient since it is a peaked p wave we would like to call it a p pulmonal the definition of p pulmonal in the limb leads is more than 2.5 but in the chest leads is more than 1.5 cm so a very prominent peaked p wave which is noticed every time is uh, definitely a feature that tells you that there is a problem with the right side of the heart of the patient so therefore the ecg finding of this condition is p pulmonal or peaked p waves then the echocardiography will also give you information ecg will show right axis deviation also because any side of the heart becomes bigger the axis tends to go towards that particular side
if you will be doing a chest x-ray in this patient uh, then you will notice that the right atria will appear relatively more prominent so will be superior vena cava because right heart border is formed by not the right ventricle but the right atria and the superior vena cava and they would be relatively enlarged in this person or engorged in the patient even the shadow of the a zygos vein will be relatively pronounced so mainly the findings are related to the right hand side and to confirm the diagnosis we will obviously do a echocardiography in the patient which will be revealing a presence of a thickened valve now when do you say severe tricuspid stenosis the answer is less than one square centimeter for mitral stenosis severe is less than 1.5 square centimeter very severe is less than one but for tricuspid stenosis the usual textbook says severe is defined as less than one square centimeter or the time taken for the blood to go from the right atria to the right ventricle you see the time taken for the blood to go from the right atria to right ventricle in these patients will usually be increased because the opening is relatively narrowed so the time that is taken here is usually defined on echocardiography as more than 190 milliseconds so the definition of severe tricuspid stenosis will be the size of the orifice less than one square centimeter and the time taken to be more than 190 milliseconds coming to the treatment of this particular condition one of the foremost things to be done is obviously a salt restricted diet since these patients are having ascites and the second important role would be that of diuretics where we can use uh, aldosterone antagonists for the patient the main treatment for this patient would be valve repair Ideally, this valve repair should have occurred at the time of mitral valve repair only. Like if there was a balloon dilatation for mitral valve, the tricuspid valve should have been handled. But lots of time the tricuspid lesion might be missed. So that is when the valve repair of this person would be done. And if valve repair is not possible, then even a prosthetic valve might be required for patients of tricuspid stenosis. Um, either it could be a biological valve or it could be a metallic device. The disadvantage of a metallic device is only the fact that though it has a good longevity, the metallic device will require a lifelong anticoagulation. So depending upon the availability and the paying capacity of the patient, either a prosthetic or a metallic device can be put. I repeat my statement, with a metallic prosthetic valve, the lifelong anticoagulation part is definitely to be taken into consideration. And if a person is, uh, I would say, uh, saying right before you that, you know, I cannot take any uh, prophylactic medicines after surgery because person will say sir I'm paying you I'm undertaking a proper treatment from you why should I take medicine after surgery can't you make me you know uh, as close to as asymptomatic as possible so I mean different people have different reasons right so lots of time we say this is an indication this is how it's to be done person says well I don't want to take it so in those circumstances you have to put up a static well he might have to pay a little more that for uh, more for that though